Say that you wanted to design a game where the player has to climb their way to the top of the level. Perhaps you want to add a computer-controlled competitor to the game in order to add some challenge. But the question arises, how do you teach a computer to navigate the level? One way to do it might simply be to give the computer some instructions to follow. For instance, go one metre to the left, go two metres up, and so on. This works well, but breaks down when our levels get longer and more complex, as that requires an ever larger list of instructions. So instead, what if you allowed the computer to choose where to go next? To do this, you could give the computer some information to inform its choice. For example, a computer could simply always choose to climb the nearest ladder, like this. And in the game we've seen so far, this works perfectly. The problem is that it will break down if we try to make our game any more complex. If we were to block off some of the ladders to force the player to think ahead, our program would still favour the nearest ladder, even if that ladder is a dead end. So we need a new algorithm that's able to adapt to changes in our game. It needs to be able to solve problems as we add them to the game. How do we make a computer solve problems? Well, let's start by marking out a dot, representing the current state of our robot. In this case, that's its current position. Next, we'll need to consider where our robot is able to go. There's effectively two options. If the robot takes the action to go up the right ladder, actions are represented here by lines between dots, the robot isn't able to go anywhere else. Notice that we're building out a tree of every possible place the robot can end up in from some start point. In effect, the robot starts from the top dot and takes the right line in order to get to the top of the right-hand ladder. This new state is represented by a new dot. Since we're not able to go any further on this path, we'll go up to the previous state and try the left-hand ladder. Again, the action of taking the left-hand ladder is represented by a line, and the state at the top of the ladder is given its own dot. From here, we have the option of going up two more ladders. In order to provide a point to the game, let's add a new dot, Perhaps this dot ends the level. And so that both ladders don't take you to the end of the game, let's also add a barrier so that only one route is successful. Now, once again, let's go up the left-hand ladder. This adds another branch to our tree and is again a dead end. Taking the right route, we're left with two options, the ladder up to the next level, or the level-ending dot, which represents the goal of our robot. Once we've made it to the end of the level, we've completed our goal. This is represented with a green dot on our tree. In fact, once the computer has run this simulation, it's able to pass the correct set of instructions to the robot in order to win the game. It simply has to follow the green path, like so. The interesting thing about this simulation, though, is that this tree idea can easily be translated to other problems. Let's try using our tree to solve a very simple maze. To start with, we have our first dot, representing the start of the maze. Then, we can move straight to the first intersection in our maze. Here, we can choose to go either left or down. If we go down, then we create another state on our tree and find ourselves at a dead end, so we go up. Then, if we go left, we find our way to the end of the maze. Notice that this tree represents every place you could end up in in the maze. To clarify the way that this tree structure allows us to solve problems, it might help to understand what exactly is required for it to be possible for a problem to be solved with this technique. To start with, the problem must have a clearly defined starting point, called the initial state. In our case, that's the start of the maze. You also need to be able to list all the actions you can take from some state. For example, from the start of the maze, the only option you have is to move through to the intersection or once you're at the intersection, you can only go down or left. The third point is that you need to be able to determine what state you're in after taking some action, the result of executing that action. In the case of the maze, for example, you need to know where you end up when you move through to the intersection, though this, like all the other points, is entirely dependent on the specific problem you're considering. The final point is that you need to be able to determine when you've made it to the goal. In the case of our maze, the goal is simply the exit. These four points are vital, but also pretty vague. They can apply to almost any problem, and allow the computer to solve it all on its own. The only problem with this technique is that in order to find the solution to a problem, you may need to test every single state that's possible within that problem, even if it doesn't make sense to do so. For instance, in the case of the maze, you might argue that picking the left-hand choice first makes more sense, since the left-hand option is always going towards the goal, 
This makes our system more efficient by using what computer scientists call a heuristic. A heuristic is a method of approximating the correct solution to a problem. In this case, the problem is what path will bring us to the end of the maze. Of course, it's entirely possible for a heuristic to be wrong, it's simply an approximation. But typically going towards the exit in a maze makes sense, and in this case it allows us to solve the problem while exploring less states. Let's take the idea of a heuristic back to the original problem. In this case, a good heuristic might simply be which ladder is closer to the goal dot. To start with, the left ladder is closer than the right ladder, so we choose this path first. Now, note that the right hand ladder is still an option, but is the furthest path from our goal. Again, the left hand ladder is closest to the goal, so we choose it and meet a dead end. Heuristics aren't necessarily perfect, they just help us reach the solution faster. Now we can pick the next nearest ladder, which is of course the right hand ladder. From here, we can see that there's a state that brings us directly to the dot, allowing us to solve the problem while exploring two less states than before. This is a relatively simple form of AI, far less complex than modern learning AIs, but it gives a fascinating insight into how to teach a computer to solve a problem, and provides a good basis for understanding more complicated techniques.